Welcome to the Prep Zone Show, presented by Bevel State. I'm Jonathan Bentley, joined with my co-host, Zach McCuller. Zach, we are officially now halfway through the season. Everybody's played at least five games. Yeah. I, I this will be season. over before you know it. I hate the season's almost over. And we've already <laughs> got some teams that are basically determined whether they're going to be in the playoffs or not. We're getting to the weird time of season where things come down to tiebreakers and games that we didn't think would matter at the beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. So, yes, I hate that it's almost over. <laughs> it's not, it's not even almost over. I'm <laughs> aggravating. But uh, we're halfway through and... Hopefully the second half of the season will be better than the first half. It wouldn't take much, would it? No, not really. No, I mean, not for the county. It's been a miserable type of year for some of these teams. But guess what? You know, they're still playing football. True. I don't I don't think anything bad about a team because these are high school kids. Right. You know? I mean, they do what they can. They don't have to be out there. They not get anything. It's their decision. They love the game, usually. Usually. <laughs> right, most of them. Okay, uh, so let's jump into last week. We had some, it wasn't a great slate as you can remember, no. but it turned out to be pretty good. It did. There was, some, there was some games on here. So Curry got in the win column. Yeah, I'm glad. Vina for the second year in a row. Hey, if you've got a, what was it last year, 30 something, 36 30. game winning mm-hmm. streak, or uh, losing streak, schedule Vina because there's a good chance you'll get a win. Curry puts up 61 points, which is more than they had mm. scored in the entire season combined. Um, Definitely good for Curry to get. Their first win, and who knows? They have a chance of getting another week, uh, well, another win this week, don't you think? There's a chance. Yes, there's a chance, exactly. But they put up 66 on Vina last year and won that game 66 22. It was very similar. And I feel good for those kids and the coach. I mean, it's just a load off. It yeah, has to be. Jace Cordell getting his first win as a high school head coach. Yeah, that had to be a great feeling. Um, on the other end, we had Corner, which is our only undefeated team left. Halfway through the season, we have one team left. Who would have thought that that was going to be corner? I would never have guessed that. I thought they were, you know, even if they were pretty good, they would have lost at least to Dora. Instead, they beat Dora last week, and this week they beat Fultondale 42-21. to It's kind of what we expected, right? Yeah, and uh, credit corner. You know, you're coming off a big win against your big rival, and nothing about Fultondale really jumps out to you. So you would expect the team to maybe sleepwalk through it and struggle. Not corner. They really played well. Yep. Now, I wrote down here, when do you think they get their first loss? But we'll kind of touch on that a little bit later. Though. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All, right. All right. So, Oakman uh, beat Winterboro. That's five in a row, 34-6. to six. Yeah, getting revenge for that weird loss. That was really season. strange. Kind of sent them on the wrong direction last year. It, was a it, very... it wouldn't have made, it made no difference in reality except for the record. And, you know, obviously you want every win you can get, but non-region game. Yeah, five in a row, five and one. Good start to them. Uh, you a game you went to Sydney Lanier forty seven Jasper thirty that's five straight losses. Yeah, Jasper. Jasper's at five straight. Not <laughs> really. It's seven straight if you count the two games at the end of last year that they lost. That's correct. Yeah, it's been a rough season. It has. Uh, Lynn, kind of what we expect there forty nine to fourteen over Tarrant. Addison picked up 22-17. That was a good win for Addison. I was surprised because Good Hope's 4A, and I really didn't expect Addison to win that. But they go out there and they win 22-17. Really good for the Bulldogs, especially heading into a massive game this week. Huge game. With Meek. One of our biggest games this week. But, yeah, Good Hope, and they scored on the last play of the game. So, really, it was 22-17, but it was really 22-11 before that. Um, Phil Campbell beat Carbon Hill 52-13. to yeah, Carbon Hill, they scored struggling. both of their touchdowns in the second half. So they still hadn't scored in the first half of the game this season. They Carbon Hill needs to start out with at least a score in that first half if they want to try to win a game. Speaking of scoring, Summon to Christian, the game I went to, Talladega County Central 33, Summon to Christian 8. They did score their second touchdown they of the did. year. They did, their second touchdown. Most points they scored all season at 8. Talladega County Central breaks their 25-game losing streak. Yeah, they did. Summon to Christian – Hey, it can only get better from here. You know, yeah, Talladega Christian. County Central, if I didn't know any better, I thought they were pretty good. Yeah. You know, they looked good that night. Some of the Christian, they can basically tear everything down and say, look, we're not playing great football. We've got to have something change, and they can build from the bottom. Okay, so I wrote this. Uh, what about rating your games? We're halfway through. The games you've seen in person this year, do you have a game that stands out to you? Yeah, I think the best game, to be perfectly honest, and if you look at the final score, you're thinking, where are you getting this from? But it was Addison-Winston County way back in week one. Uh, I was at that one yeah, for Winston a County, Yeah, Winston County won 14-0. Uh, Addison wasn't able to get a whole lot of offense put together. But it was really until the very last couple of minutes of the game, Addison was within striking distance to make it a game. Winston County was able to hold on, and it was really a very – 
good ball game. And what's crazy is Chris Clemens had that great game, and he hasn't been able to play since. Yeah, he got hurt, and now uh, – Yeah, he just had surgery. Yeah, now Winston County is looking for other options to tote the football. Yeah, that change. Yeah, and I hate that. They looked really good that game. They did. They did. My game would be a couple of weeks ago. Dora losing to corner twenty-one to fourteen. Yeah, it was I mean, a really I entertaining. There, so, but I figured that yeah, if I'd have been there, that really would have probably I mean, the it, was, it was like Dora. It looked like the first team that scored a touchdown was going to win. It was six right. nothing at halftime. Then corner scored three touchdowns in the third quarter, and then Dora tied it at one point, fourteen fourteen. Nobody scored in the fourth, but it was just. You know, great de- – I really am an offensive guy, but that was a great defensive game on both sides of the ball. Yeah, good defense is always a beauty to watch. You know, we like offensive numbers, like you said, yes. so you must have enjoyed that LSU Ole Miss game Saturday night. Had I picked Ole Miss, I would have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a shootout. Um, and we had Meek score 72. This, no, that was too that much. Was, yeah, t- <laughs> that was two weeks ago, 72-16. Yeah. This week they had a bye, didn't they? So. They had a bye. You know, there, there's a reason we're not talking about four teams from last week. Dora was off, Cordova was off, Meek was off, and Winston County was off. So they're all back this week, full slate. Um, okay, so speaking of this week, this is not a very good slate. That was kind of – all right, so what's the biggest game you think this week? Well, Henry, several. I mean, you look, you've got Cordova, Dora, the 100th meeting, and that massive rivalry. But in my opinion, the biggest game this week is Fett County Oakman because oh. the loser of that game is going to be the fourth team in that region with uh, Gordo and Winfield. So definitely, if either team wants a chance at pulling something in the playoffs, right. they've got to win this game. This game is basically an extra playoff game halfway through the season. Yep. It's so important, and I think it's going to be a good game. Yeah. I, I like, you know, Oakman, they've both been tested early. Right. Both and not so Sullivan. much late. Yeah. Yeah, Sullivan beat both of them. Oakman beat Cordova. That was early. They've had kind of three Fe- easier games in a row. Fake County beat Cordova, too. Yeah, they got common County. opponents. Yeah, they do. Two of them. That's crazy. But both non-region. That's gonna be that's gonna be tough. Oakman hasn't won a game like this in a couple of years. They really need this yeah. one. Oakman, you know, like you talking about a couple of years ago, you know, 2019, 2020, they were winning these games. Yes, they, they were, were really they were the good. ones dominating these regions and they were the ones making long playoff trips and it all fell apart last season. Oakman's clawing and climbing, yeah. trying to get back into that position. This would definitely go a long way in determining if they're there yet. Yeah, those Oakman teams were absolutely loaded a couple oh. years ago. And then they all gra- every one of them graduated. Which, and left them last year with that very young team that still made right. the playoffs. But, yeah, they are – I think they're getting better, and this will be a big win if they keep that going. And this is uh, the 100th meeting between Cordova and Dora. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. That's a lot. In high school football, you don't expect to see 100th meetings that often. It means uh, these two programs really haven't had a lot of squabbles. They haven't canceled that many games. And – uh, it's a fairly even series, too. Yeah, Cord- as far as, yeah, that, usually you'll get one team that's won a ton yeah. more. But Cordova's up by three. Yeah, 50, 47, and two back in the days when there were ties. Thank goodness there are no more ties. <laughs> we love Imagine. overtime. I, I, I'm old enough to remember college ties. That was awful. That didn't change until 1996. So in 1995, there was tie football games. Yeah, it just made no sense. All right, uh, NFL can still tie. That's true, it, but yeah. it has to go through an it's overtime. It's pretty rare. Period. It does happen, seem like once or twice a year. All right, so some other games this week. Corner at Northside. Now, last year, this was a huge game. It was, and I think it still will be because, you know, Northside loses this, and you look at Northside's schedule. Northside's been the perennial playoff power in the region and in the area. They're going to miss the playoffs, most likely, if they lose this game yeah. because you think, who's going to make the playoffs in that region? Well, Corner, Oak Grove. Dora, then Northside and Haleyville are battling it out for that fourth spot, and Haleyville's got a win over Northside already. That's right. Yeah. So Northside really needs to win this game if they want to make the playoffs. Yeah, otherwise they're going to have to beat some teams that will be a big upset, right? which is possible. But, yeah, that's crazy. We're used to seeing Northside in the playoffs at this point. All right, so some other games. Uh, we have – let's talk about Meek Addison. Yeah, Meek Addison – that's going to be a really big game because, mm-hmm. you know, of course, Hackleberg's really taken off and taking control know, of that region, that. which I did not see coming in the least. Not this game is for a home playoff spot, second place in the region most likely. Uh, going to be a good game. Yeah, a game you'll be at with the radio moment. station. But um, I wrote down – I looked up some things on this game. They haven't won at Addison since 1993. Oh, my goodness. Which is unbelievable. Well, you, you forget how bad Meek was recently. That's true. You know, just maybe four, three or four years ago. Yeah, yeah, five years ago they were – so they had 
snapped a 13-game losing streak last year to Addison. Addison was 21-1 and the last 22 years before last year. So, Meek can do it, but I just like the way Addison's playing right now. I do, now. too. I think I agree with you in saying that Addison is going to win. And um, Addison, like we said, coming off that massive win against Good Hope last week, that's why I think that they're going to win this thing. Now, okay, so you picked Fayette to beat I, Oakman, right? I did. I've got Fett beating Oakman because uh, – Fett's a perennial contender, a perennial power. I just think the stage may be a little too bright for Oakman. I don't. I know they're going to be well prepared, but Fett County's more used to it. Fett County's preparing for this game. I think the Tigers are going to win, but it's going to be a very close game. I hope you're wrong on that. I did pick Oakman, but yet again, it seems like they, you know, I picked Door to beat Winfield, even right. though I knew Winf- kind of the same situation. And like you've said several times, Winfield and Fett County are the two teams it feels like uh, people from our area struggle against. Yes, that's very true. Oakman needs that. And uh, I guess we're both going Dora against Cordova. Yeah, we're both going to go Dora Cordova. Even really, though Cordova did get that win last they time they got played. a win. They have a bye week, so maybe they've got a little momentum. But Cordova's really struggled this season. Yeah. And Dora, you know, maybe a little under expectations, but I think they're still in a really good position. It's very similar to how Dora went into last year's Cordova game. It's kind of where they turned the corner. Hopefully that happens again. But, I mean, I can see Cordova – they got everything in front of them. They have one win, and they could still make the playoffs starting with this yeah, game. They would have to beat – yeah, they'd have to win this against Dora. You know, there are obviously teams ahead of them like Oak Grove, Haleyville, Northside. Yeah, they, they need wins. Corner, need lots of got, wins. <laughs> got to beat these teams. All right, so Winston County at Cold Springs, I guess we know how we're going on that one. Yeah, I think we're going to pick Winston, Winston County. County that. Absolutely. Uh, Winston County is very talented. They've beaten Addison already this season, like I alluded to. I think Winston County's probably going to dominate this one. I think they're the, probably the best three and two team around. Definitely. You know? I mean, their losses were Sullivan, then East Lawrence, and East Lawrence yeah, in, in the, the rain. rain. Yeah, home. and Weird. they had lead in that. Mm-hmm. Both had lead in both of those. Um, Carbon Hill at Gordo. Yeah, when you talk about yeah, no. zero and five, Carbon Hill five and one. Gordo. Gordo is Gordo. Gordo is the problem. Uh, Curry at Hamilton. This one you kind of mentioned earlier. Yeah, Curry's got a shot here. Hamilton is on a very long losing streak. I think they've lost, what was it, 23 of their last 24 or something? Their only win was against Curry, Curry last, last year. year. And make it their second win against Curry in two years. I think uh, the yeah, Aggies are going to win this one. But I do think that the Curry offense is going to be able to put up some points and make Hamilton sweat it out a little bit. They got 61 again. I like their chances. Mm-hmm. No. Um, South Lamar at Summoning Christian. Very long yeah, year for Summoning Christian. S- South Lamar South last Lamar's year. South Lamar's good. Last yeah. year won that game seven nothing. That's right. This yeah, year it cost somebody Christian a playoff spot last yeah, year. Yeah, and this year I think it's going to be a little more than yeah, seven. Different than that. All right. What about uh, Jasper at Hayden? You saw Jasper last week. I did. Uh, I was, uh, you know, I, they kept it close against Lanier, but Lanier had twenty two penalties in the game, and when you still lose by three possessions to a team with twenty two points or twenty two penalties. You've got struggles, (laughs) and I think Hayden's going to win this at Hayden. But I will say this. If it were at Jasper, I like the Vikings' chances. Unfortunately, it's not, so I'm going to pick the Wildcats. I'm actually going Jasper, picking the winless team, but I just think Hayden is – I think Jasper's got more athletes. They have a great running back, and maybe the offense can get something going there, I hope. They just need to win. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> Let's get the you, win. You don't want to see Jasper go 0 for 10. I mean, that would be yeah. – I would hate to see this that. This is their – right now their best chance of the win. Yeah. Hayden won last week. They were winless before that. All right. So, um, okay, our, this is our weekly top five count here. We go through the top five teams in the area, these high school teams. We Luckily, we only go to five because after yeah, that would because, be very rough. Yeah, we've only got 12, but I wouldn't want to yes. rank the top 12. No, it, well, it'd be hard to distinguish. Down at the bottom, the bottom, it would get yeah. very difficult. Okay, um, start with your number five this you know, week. Number five, I've got Addison after that big win. I think they're one of the most talented teams we've got. Um, two losses, which, you know, right now they're not looking too bad with uh, Winston County as one of them who I don't have ranked ahead of Addison, which – it kind of compromises what I normally do. Normally, if normally I'll have <laughs> you somebody beat that beat you, you, beat you, you should be. But I think Addison right now is the better team. And if they played again today, I think Addison would win that game. Yeah, because of injuries. And I do have Winston County at okay. fifth. Yeah, might as well. I mean, they are like we mentioned that very close losses. They're a pretty good team. 
They are. And they're going to be a playoff team. I just hope God, they're going to need to upset somebody to be second. Eventually they'll run into Fife again or something yeah, like immediately. You, you don't want to see somebody run no. into a Made the second round match. last year and ran into Fife. But, yeah, just to get to that spot would be really good. So I have them at fifth. Who? who what about number four? Yeah, number four, I've got Dora. They're with two losses, one oh. to Winfield, one to Corner. So not bad losses. Uh, they are the highest ranked of our two lost teams. Um, I think Dora's got a really good shot at making the making the playoffs and making the second round again like they did last year, maybe mm-hmm. pushing past that. So Dora is not out of it by any stretch of the imagination right now. I think it's a well-coached and very talented team. I also have Dora, and basically for the same reason. Right. They, the, the talent is just incredible. Overwhelming. Talent. Yeah. yeah. They've been more probably more talented than every team they played this year. It's a matter of putting it together, and I still think they will. They did it last year. Chavis will get it done over there. Yeah, I agree. Uh, what about number three? Number three, I've got Oatman. They've really looked good since that opening week loss, five in a row, like you mentioned earlier. Uh, the Wildcats, this is uh, probably their one of their last chances for a win in the region, probably their last chance for a win because I don't see them beating Winfield or Gordo. Um, but if let's say they do win this game, they could Boy. legitimately wind up seven and three because I think they can beat Meek last week of the season. Yeah, they, this, is, this starts kind of the gauntlet. Yeah. For Oakman, who I also have in the same spot. Our top three are probably the same. Right. But um, Oakman, I just, I just really like – they're so well coached. You they know? are. I noticed that early in the year. I was like, wow, this team's just different. You know, they're getting things done. They're more if, professional than most high school teams you'll see in the 3A level. And I think if they win this one, it'd set up something big. It could. I don't know. Gordo and Winfield, maybe they could do something, but it would be – a Huge upset. Maybe it, Winfield. I think they have a. They might have a chance against Winfield. Gordo. Gordo is probably the largest 3A team. They bounce up and down between 3A and 4A, it seems like. Uh, probably, they prob- I would say they're probably the biggest 3A team we've got. Very tough in, to be in, Gordo. In, but anywhere. Yeah, just start with Fayette, and that would be a good start. Right. Um, all right, so the top two are pretty obvious. Yeah, Lynn's at number two, and, of course, Corner's yeah. going to be at number one. Lynn... Very good team. Their only loss was about ten points to Alabama Christian. Should we? We shouldn't even count that against them. No. Because last year they got absolutely drummed at home. This year they traveled to Montgomery and it's only a ten point game. That so, shows something. Yeah, yeah. Lentz still got a chance at that state title that I thought that they might have a shot at at the beginning of the season. Yeah, this is a big, big, tough game this week, which we didn't talk about. What about Lynn at uh? <laughs> Lynn Pickens County. Yeah, Lynn. That's pretty big. That's <laughs> might be the biggest massive, game of the week. Right? Massive game. Yeah, why didn't we even bring that up? <laughs> but, uh, Somebody might have left it off the list. I'm just guessing. Yeah, I, I'm I wonder just, who I did I that. Mm. Yep. It's, it's probably the sports editor here at the Eagle. He doesn't, he, he's not good at his job. There's I'm no sure. proof. There's no proof against. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, the, so Lynn's ranked. Pickens County's ranked. Pickens County lost last week. They did. They got drummed pretty good. Which is why I think Lynn is going to pull You're gonna off pick a win. Lynn. I'm going to pick Lynn in Ow. this one. I think Lynn's going to win uh, just because Pickens got absolutely drummed by Fett County last week. So I think the Lynn Bears are going to win. Boy, that's a tough game on the road. It's a really, really, really tough to win at Pickens. I'll probably take Pickens just for that reason, but – I think Lynn could, might just be better than them. We'll I find agree. out. I think that this could be a lot better than them this year. All right, so uh, now number one corner. Yes. Obviously, our only undefeated team. Yeah, and you brought up earlier in the show, when are they going to get that first loss? And I think, are they? That's, <laughs> that's the important question. Are they going to get the first loss? Because, you know, Oak Grove, and Oak Grove next week tough. could mm-hmm. be a threat. Other than that, though, yeah, though if there was a win. line, there is a lot. They do have high school lines yeah. on one of these sites, but yeah, they might be favored in every one of these games at this point. Corner has a very good chance to win out and go undefeated, which I would never have guessed at the beginning of the season. You know, you lose talent like they did, and they're able to rebound bigger mm-hmm. and better. Yeah, I mean, I didn't expect it this year, but they really, really impressed me. I mean, just across the board, everything's good. Coaching, great coaching, great players execution you know they lost some players and it just didn't matter that's what good programs do right all right so we'll jump into college um you did not go to the mississippi state game it was no late, i didn't right? yeah, 8 p.m that was rough. and they drubbed them so it I mean, was it was no, no it really wasn't as dominant as the final score looks uh, you only throw 12 passes in the entire game yep. 
which would have made some people from the 70s and 80s, people that like that kind of football. Very proud. Very, yeah, very proud. They would have been happy at that. Uh, Alabama probably did try for about 20 or 30 passes, it seemed like, <laughs> but it was either a sack or a bad snapper. Jalen Milrow took off running with it. But Alabama, I think right now, uh, they are getting better with every game. So hopefully that will translate onto the field this week against Texas A&M, which is just going to be a tough, tough game. Yeah, the- Texas A&M gets an up for Alabama. Right. We'll remember that from last year. But to play – this is, this is going to be tough. I really – I don't think much of Jimbo Fisher, but <laughs> he will get this team ready for this one game right here. This is before the season. If you just said – if you had to pick one game for Alabama to lose, I would have said this is the week that really? they lose. But they've already got one loss with Texas. So I think Alabama would be more focused than if it was the undefeated Crimson Tide that we normally see heading into this matchup. Last two years, you brought this up. Bama's really struggled against A&M. Lost back in 21 on the road. Right. Last year, a hapless Texas A&M team took it to the very end at Bryant Denny, which was absolutely stressful and ridiculous. <laughs> Came down a, a last yeah, play of the game. Last play, a team that Auburn beat with a with a Cornell coach. coach. That tells you how much they get up for Bama. They just they get up for this game. That's going to be tough. It's good. I'm taking Alabama, but it's going to be super close. All right, so Auburn lost to Georgia, number one Georgia. It was really, really close. It was 20 to 20 late, and Bowers called a touchdown. Yeah, I mean, and Auburn decided to Bowers. forget about – didn't cover They, they didn't Bowers. do – the guy did a okay job sometimes, and then other times it was like it wasn't even there. It was – you could count on it. It was going to be third and eight, third and ten, third and eleven maybe. Then they were going to find Brock Bowers wide open running across the middle. <laughs> right. It never fails. That, that's, that was the difference in the game. They converted all their third downs, and Auburn didn't. Auburn hardly converted but, any. It was 27-20, though. I mean, I yeah, was, credit Auburn. They really – I was very encouraged yeah, they, by that. Auburn really played very well. I mean, I hate they lost. Of course, disappointed losing to Georgia again, but very encouraged by it. I'm glad that the co- coaching staff made some changes. Some from A&M, which was a disastrous offensive game. All right, so uh, Auburn's off this week before LSU. Yeah, LSU's really struggling. Um, That's going to be a – yeah. I, Auburn's got a shot there. It's going to be a night game at LSU. It's going to be very difficult. Yeah. But what, do we, what is your opinion of Auburn at this point? Well, right now I think Auburn uh, – they got up for Georgia just because, you know, when a number one team or a number two team or, you know, a really highly ranked team goes to Jordan Hare, they're never going to come out of there with an easy win, it seems like. Right. So I think Auburn got up for that game. The question is, you know, next week against LSU, has it just weighed Auburn down? You know, they were so close to beating Georgia, and now, oh, well, who cares about the rest of the season? Or does it inspire Auburn to play better football? Hopefully that's the case. Because then they got Ole Miss at home, that'll be another really yeah. tough game. Ole Miss is a much better team than we give them credit to be. Yeah. Give us done a great job this year. Okay, do you have some picks for us this week? Yeah, I do. I don't have very many, but the first game is actually a very intriguing battle of Tigers. LSU, who you mentioned is getting Auburn next week, Mm -hmm. they have to go to Columbia to take on the Missouri Tigers. Missouri's undefeated at 5-0, ranked 23rd. LSU is 3-2, but still ranked higher. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Which is weird, but... Uh, do you think Missouri's gonna w- gonna win that game, which would technically be an upset, wouldn't it? Uh, probably not. I, it is at Missouri, and as someone before the show mentioned, they won there not that long ago. Yeah, it was three years ago, I think. At Ogeron, so I just I think LSU. I don't know. They're really disappointing so far. I mean, they did not think they'd be three and two sitting here with two losses. Florida State, sure, but then the Ole Miss game that was. Awful, hard to watch. It, 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 if you like defense, <laughs> right. it was the worst game you've ever seen. If you love offense, it was just uh, beauty and everything is so wonderful. I do like offense. But uh, Brian Kelly electing to sit on a lead in a game where you gave up 700 yards, I just said, uh, try to win the game. Yeah, you got to Just try to win off. the game. If you lose, that's fine. Don't <laughs> sit on a lead, Gus Malzahn style, and Ooh. blow it. That was that's what he loved yeah, to do, that, that's and did, a, it, did it last week too. Yeah, that's a yeah. reference to Baylor was down thirty-five-seven late in the third quarter to UCF and puts together twenty-nine twenty-nine to yeah. come back and win thirty-six thirty-five. Very <laughs> that should never happen. It, it makes put, you, that's why I always like Spurrier at Florida. Put your foot on the throat, you know. Make sure this thing's over, right? You know, and when it's yeah. 
late Keep in the fourth quarter. Keep trying to score. Yeah, when it's late in the fourth quarter, then take your foot off the gas. But, you know, early fourth quarter, it's a conference game, and you're up by four wow, touchdowns. Very so people tough. can make that distance nowadays. You know, 15 minutes is an eternity in college football. Even, uh, uh, even with the running clock, they came yeah. back. With the faster times this year. All right, what else we got? Yeah, my next game is really an intriguing one out west. Washington State going to UCLA. Uh, Washington State's undefeated. I think really highly of them because they've got a talented team. But UCLA has been known to pull off upsets at home to teams like this. So does UCLA win? Well, technically it's not an upset because oh, the Bruins are favored. Are favored by a little bit. Yeah, three and a half, I think. I'm taking UCLA, even though I do cheer for a team with no conference, like Washington State yeah. and Oregon State. And they're both good this year. They are, which is funny. But, yeah, I think UCLA, but – I don't feel good about it. I agree with you in that I'm picking UCLA, but I disagree in that you don't feel good about it because I, f- I feel very feel good, good about it. Because Washington State, I think it's time for them to lose a game. Not that I want them to lose. I don't <laughs> want them to lose. Uh, but it's time you know, for an upstart team. This is the time of season where upstart teams start to fall apart if they're really not made of what it takes to make the playoffs. Uh, we saw Colorado, how that yes. completely – Came back down to earth. But then they almost almost came back last week. They nearly beat UCLA, which was a thrilling game. They played well last week. They did. But uh, I've got UCLA as well. Now on to probably the biggest game of the week so far, depending on what side you're on. South Alabama. Yes, and I'm (laughs) taking them. No, no, I wasn't going to mention that, but uh, (laughs) I agree with you. South Alabama's going to beat ULM this week. Uh, And when you look at the rankings, you're thinking, is this a big game? Well, it's Notre Dame-Louisville which is really a pretty big game because Louisville's undefeated. Notre Dame's got one loss to Ohio State that they should have won. Yes, they I should picked have Notre Dame, game. and they that really hurt me that. in the limb. On the limb, so <laughs> I'm still mad about that. Uh, do you think Louisville's going to make an upset? God, I, I don't think Lu- Notre Dame's that great. I figured Ohio State would have drilled them, and they really should have lost that game. But So this is going to be pretty close, but I'm going to take Notre Dame. I agree with but, you. I really don't know what Louisville's made of. Yeah. But, I mean, for them to be 5-0 is a great turnaround. It is. And Louisville, they've got uh, Jeff Brom now in as head coach mm-hmm. from Purdue. Louisville's a really talented team, but Notre Dame's got way more talent. I think Notre Dame's probably going to win it big, especially, you know, this is the third straight week they've played an undefeated. They had Ohio wow. State. Last week they had Duke. This week they have Louisville. And next week they get USC. And they could have, so, wow, they could have easily won or lost those games. That Notre, Duke game was incredible. Uh, it was in Notre Dame. They're running through a tough, tough gauntlet so far. So if they're able to escape this regular season with one loss, they need to be in the college football playoff with all the wins that they've put together. Yeah, that's a tough schedule. All right, last game, and you've already you already really picked it, which uh, it's going to take a little steam off of it. Yeah, but South oh well. Alabama, I know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> picked them to beat U- ULM. Yeah, well, the real Alabama traveling to right. College Station. You've already said you think Alabama's going to win. Obviously, mm-hmm. I think Alabama's going to win. But uh, what do you think the final score is going to be? And do you think Texas A&M has a good chance? I think they have a great chance with how much they get up for this game. Right. You no, know? I mean it'll probably be in the thirties, maybe thirty-one twenty-eight, something like that. Okay. Yeah, I you think they'll I score see- that much. I think I don't know if Alabama's gonna score thirty. I mean, it may be like twenty-four to twenty, like last year. I can see that. Same too. similar mm-hmm. score, something like that. But I do think it's gonna be kind of a tough game to watch if you like offense. Uh, I think both offenses are really gonna struggle. I think it's gonna be a defensive game, but of course, I think Alabama's gonna win. But definitely going to be scary night if you're th- if you're rooting for Alabama like I am, because and M's got the firepower to win this game. Yeah, they do. I would not be surprised. Like I said, they get up for it. So uh, that wraps up our show. I want to uh, thank Bevel State again for sponsoring the show. And if you like what you see, or don't, to mention before, <laughs> subscribe and like. And uh, we'll, thanks to Jake for producing, and we'll see you next week. Bevel State is your community college. For... convenient and affordable academic transfer options. Rewarding health science programs. High wage, high demand career tech training. Your story starts.